King and Queen Cichlids, the adventure of two people who love the hobby. And then fell in love. Hi guys, it's Scott. Hey guys, it's Liz. From King and Queen Cichlid, I got my buddy It with me. I went and saw the movie last night. I wasn't scared at all. I proved Liz that I was the man. And he only screamed twice. <laughs> and that was when I saw a picture of Alan and Kurt. Had nothing to do with the movie. Check him out. He's pretty cool, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Looks like Kurt a little bit with that haircut, I tell you. Check that out. I don't know. I'd like to see Kurt with some orange. <laughs> All right. Let's get going and talk about what we're supposed to talk about today. Uh, today, we are going to do a talk about AIDS of the Ampelopus, and we're doing that for two different reasons. Number one, because we are entering three different species of Ampelopus into the Keystone class, happening next weekend, the 22nd through the 24th. If you don't know about it, get on the, get on the website, keystoneclass.com. Big event, over 202 entries so far. It's going to be a great event with some great speakers, uh, banquet, awards, everything you can think of. Everything a good convention should be. So check that out. The second reason is because we keep bringing it. Well, Liz has got her own little side business where she uh, buys stuff up, cleans them up, pairs them up with other uh, equipment, and then resells them. And she has had quite the mix of people come through our fish room. Uh, we're always open to letting people come walk around. And uh, a couple of, all, well, all of them are, are a little awestruck when they come in, correct? Yeah, they're uh, not, they're familiar with pet store fish, you know, two to three inches. They're not familiar with seeing full grown fish. Right, right. Or so. cichlids for that matter. A lot of them don't even know what a cichlid is. <laughs> yeah, so we try to give them some information. I had one guy say, oh my God, I've never seen goldfish that big before. And it kind of just it broke my heart. I'm like, dude, <laughs> they're not goldfish. They're called cichlids. They're Ampelopus citronellum. A uh, common name is Midas. So they are some awesome looking cichlids. One of my favorites. We just did a talk about the Parachroma species. Uh, it's done really well on YouTube. We had over a thousand views. People are joining up. Uh, if you like what you hear today, if you like us, please uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. Join our Facebook page, and we have a website as well, kingqueensickness.com. Woo! Like to say in one breath. All right, with that, without further ado, uh, we're going to talk about the Ampelophus. Uh, they have 23 different species in the one Ampelophus family. I think we have how many species I here? I believe we have five or six of them. Uh, I know we have the Amarillo, the Chancho, the Citronellum, uh, Trimact. Redislata, and then we have, thanks to Mike Lou, we have some grow outs of some uh, lion eye. And we also have the Sajika from uh, Matt Quinn. That is correct. Or Sagittae, excuse Sagittae. me. Sajikas are um, totally different it's fish. It's a rainbow fish, isn't it? <laughs> They're um, convicts. Yeah. Convicts, convicts, okay. So, yeah, so we have about seven or eight now, I think yeah. about it, out of the 23, which isn't bad. Uh, the Parachromus, we might go back and talk a little more about that. We did the Manawins, Mudawins, uh, Lazelli, and we did, yeah, that was it. Yeah, so we still need to do the Dovi. And the Frederickside. And the Frederickside. Yeah, and actually we're going to be picking up a Frederickside from Scott Maurer from Reef to Rift. Very cool. He's bringing it to the clash for us next week. Uh, not something that you see often no. in the hobby. Anyway, let's get back to the Ampelophus. Again, Ampelophus come from the area of Central America. From Mexico to Panama, they are found. Uh, they originated from Lake Nicaragua. Uh, the godfather or the first footprint uh, that we have of the Ampelophus is the Centronellum, which is what you see behind us. Uh, we have a breeding pair, and uh, we absolutely love them. So when were they discovered? So they were first described by Gunther in 1864. Um, 1864. 1864, yes. Wow. Um, Only Alan and Kurt were probably born around then. Jeez. <laughs> so they max out about 14 inches. Um, they come, they're on, they're omnivores. Mm -hmm. uh, they enjoy snails, worms, larvae, other things like that. They come from sandy bottom lakes uh, with lots of rock, lots of wood. Yep. They are awesome. Uh, as you can tell, uh, I was a little, I, we've been doing our research on this because we want to do a, a good, accurate presentation. And I was, uh, I was surprised to see that they came from lakes that are 
higher in pH than I originally thought, yeah. warmer than I originally thought, and not a lot of plant life. So this behind us is actually aquascaped pretty correctly to what their natural environment is. I might have to uh, get rid of the silk plants because that's not actually how it looks if you went uh, looking to collect them. So uh, I have to rethink that whole thing. I do kind of like the silk plant look. But uh, behind us is actually something very accurate. And uh, like I said, our centronella pair, our Midas pair is doing quite well back there uh, breeding it all the time. Anything else on the citronella? Um, well, uh, like all Amphilophus, they're about 10 to 12 years lifespan, um, you know, with proper care. And what's interesting about the um, citronellum is in the wild, they're kind of dark to gray colored with uh, bars. But if you take them from the wild and put them in your tank, they kind of lose that and they become the one solid color. Mm. And um, the citronellums also come in several different color morphs from the orange uh, to a cream, uh, cream and orange, barred. There are several different morphs of them. Mm. It's first I've heard of that. Where did you read that information from? I believe it was Fish Base. Fish Base, okay. Most of my research, I want to give a shout out to the Cichlid Companion Room. Uh, Juan Miguel, the godfather of, of everything Cichlid, my idol. Uh, it's a pleasure. I get to work with him every yeah. now and then at the ACA. Uh, great guy. And I would direct everyone to go to the Cichlid Room Companion if you have the opportunity to. Get our ACA membership. It is well worth it. You get the cichlid room absolutely free once you become a member. And it is the one place you can go and get all the information you need for any, anything cichlids, especially stuff that we collect. So anyway, so you talked about some of the stuff they ate. We actually uh, get stuff from Super Cichlids. Lisa, shout out. Lisa and Martin, hope to see you guys next week. They have been giving us a lot of different food. Uh, we tried Norfin, and they love Norfin. Uh, they recently gave us a couple of other things we're trying. There's a new food, um, a new brand called Tropical, which um, my guys seem to really like. I don't know if you've tried it yet. I've tried it with the Buttercoferi. He loves it. Haven't tried it with these guys yet, uh, but I will. But, again, they readily, in aquariums, will take most pellet, most yeah. flake foods, you want to give them some frozen stuff, that's good as well. We don't do a lot of live food feeding to any of these fish, uh, any of our cichlids. So, Anything else on the citronellum? Yep. Okay. The fish I want to talk about uh, is the chancho. And, uh, I again, I have to tell you guys, I was not a huge Amphilophus fan uh, at first. I mean, the Midas I was okay with, uh, but I was really into Paracromus. Yeah. The, you know, the Jaguars, the Dovi, that was kind of my territory. But I have slowly begun to really enjoy them. I think the aggression level of the Amphilophus has made me kind of enjoy them a little more. Uh, they are a little more of a pet, yes. you know, with their personality than maybe my Jaguars are. Um, but anyway, the Chancho is a fish that we are showing at the Keystone Clash. We have three of them, believe it or not. Three male, unfortunately, three male chanchos. We thought we had a female at one point, but uh, Liz pulled them upside down, tickled them a little bit, and found out they were all males. So, uh, <laughs> so hopefully someone out there has a female so we can breed them, because you read that they are actually close They're to being on... very close to being um, extinct in the wild. Okay. So let me tell you a little about, um, about the area. First of all, Lake Nicaragua is the biggest lake, largest lake in Central America. Uh, some of the lakes of these fish that were the cichlids that we're talking about were created from volcanic eruptions thousands of year, years ago. And they actually call it the Ring of Fire, these circling crater lakes that are around this area in Nicaragua. Um, and the crater lake that the Chancho comes from is Apollo? Apollo. <laughs> Apollo. I always want to say Apollo because I guess I'm a Rocky fan. I'm always Apollo. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> say it for us one more time. Lake Apollo. Apollo, I guess. Okay. She's probably saying it wrong too. We'll find probably. out. I'm sure someone will correct Pam us. Pam Chin. Let us know. <laughs> Pam Chin, Wayne. Someone will let us know if we're saying it right. Anyway, Dr. Paul Zell. Yep. We're just name calling because we know him. <laughs> but anyway, 
we have three spectacular chan shows. We have one in particular that is just a monster. I think he's 14 inches. Mm -hmm. Being generous, he's huge. And he's absolute ass. Uh, I, I, I love him to death, but you can't even put your hand in there. Uh, he gets really PO'd if I start feeding other fish before him. I mean, he'll let you know. He'll be banging and, and jumping up and down. And uh, He is the epitome of uh, the headbanger. He? <laughs> he is. It's the Portman's, you know, off the chain, off the scale. So we are hoping for good things with him. His finish is awesome. I guess I need to go back to talking about them. Uh, they are... Amazing fish. They come from, you know, the citronella is like the godfather. It was first founded, what did you say, 1864? Pichancho, believe it or not, wasn't discovered until 2008. So that's just nine years ago, guys. And these fish are not readily available uh, at pet stores. I, and I really don't see them at that many, you know, fish events, fish meetings. No, I don't see them on a lot of uh, lists, order lists either. So if you're interested in getting them, I guess the people you would have to go to is like, Rusty, uh, uh, God, Tangle Up in Cichlids, yeah. Jeff Raps, uh, uh, Cichlids of America, mm -hmm. th those guys would have them. Um, if you're beginning to get into the hobby, I would suggest you do the Citronellum first, the more readily available. I think Petco even, even stocks them at this point for reasonable prices. Uh, and then I would advance to the Chanchos, obviously, because one reason is they're not a lot in the hobby and they're getting ready to be on the carrots list uh, possibly and they're just a little more difficult to take care of they have a little more needs um, you definitely I have I do most of the maintenance in the fish room aquascape cleaning water you know changing the water and I have not been able to put any of the chanchos obviously together no uh, or with any other fish I mean these guys demand to be in a tank by themselves so uh, Again, spectacular fish, uh, very similar looking to the citronellum, I think, except for the coloration. They're a little brown uh, with some spots of yellow, uh, and they do have some some baredness in them. You know, there's some lines in them. Uh, just a beautiful fish, and uh, that's probably all I have for them. Uh, I have about them, other than they are found in the deeper portions of the lakes. As opposed to, you get ready to talk about the Amarillo, I think. That's right? found in the shallower parts. Correct, of correct. So we're going to post some video up so you can check them out. The Citronellum, the Amarillo, and the Chancho. I will let you jump on the Amarillo, excuse me, and talk a little bit about that. So the Amarillo was another recently described fish in 2002. That hasn't been described that's, for very long. That's crazy. It's it, only 15 years ago, these, these fish. Yeah. You know, nine years ago for the Chancho, 15 years ago for... When you think about, you know, these guys being described in 1864, that seems so yes. much longer ago. I'm going to have to ask Alan and Kurt, who were there at that time, why it took so long to discover <laughs> these. But uh, anyway, I'm sorry to turn the body. So ahead. again, another Central American fish. They are only found in Lake Kilawa. Kilawa. Sounds Hawaiian. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they get about 14 inches long, um, and they're yellow, like yellow and black barred with uh, orange and yellow chest, really big, stocky fish. They yeah. are thick. And the reason why fish. I keep calling them armorillo is because they remind me of an armorillo. They're just bulky and, you know, like tank you said, like, like a tank. Yeah, they are. And we are very lucky that we were given one by Bill Sensor. Yeah. I've never seen them before, honestly. I've never seen the Amarillo species before. Bill had um, given us one. And he's been an absolute joy to have. I mean, just an amazing fish, best personality, beautiful coloring. Yeah, he's he's awesome. Uh, and he's a pet. He's, like, really he a is. pet. Yeah. Like he. He interacts with you, and you really go, and you're like, hi, how are you doing? And something I was reading, too, when I was researching the Amphilophus is that uh, they are described as more pet-like, that they're trainable, they're highly, highly intelligent fish, you know, that can learn. They learn to recognize you. They're very smart. Yeah, not like those damn African sickles. <laughs> but anyway, not that I'm trying to convert anyone, not me. Actually, we had a someone, I'm glad you brought that up, or I brought it up. We had someone today, and that's the best compliment I could get. I know I'm going to get in trouble with you African cichlid people. It's all right. I mean, I don't, I don't mean any harm. I love all cichlids. 
But we had a guy actually watch that video and, and made a comment that, hey, you guys actually have converted me from African cichlids to American cichlids. Yeah. And that, that's pretty that, cool. That was cool. You can't, there's not much more you can tell me that's going to bring a bigger smile to my face mm -hmm. than that. But I, I was just like, yeah, let's get it going. So uh, I just think American cichlids are amazing. I think it's really cool when you find out that some of these fish are just newly been discovered, and there's probably more out there we're going to find out about. I'm not sure. But uh, again, so the Ampelopus family, over 23 species, or 23 species, we have seven or eight of them here. We're going to be doing more talks about uh, Ampelopus. Obviously, there's a lot of different species out there, and uh, I hope that you guys will join us and, and, and subscribe to us and like us and uh, share us and tell your friends about us because we plan to do some really big things with all American cichlids. All right? Anything else there, Lizzie? No, here. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing you guys, hopefully, at the Keystone Clash. It is going to be a big, big, big enough month Wednesday. Uh, and hanging out with him and hopefully Rachel and Larry, and uh, then we'll get to see Lawrence Ken on Friday. It's going to be a blast. So thanks for joining. Hope you liked the information. If you have any questions, please comment below. And we'll be sure to help you or get you with someone that will be able to help you. Kind of our niche is to get people excited about the hobby. And then we will help direct you to the people that will give you the straight information you need to know. That's what King, King, King and Queen Cichlids, if I can say it, is all about. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Have a good day.